All right, guys, uh, let us try to see this uh, particular exercise that we uh, have here. Uh, remember, we, we talked about our number system, guys, the basic number system, uh, and also introduced, I remember talking about uh, on, the, on that exercise where we talked about uh, 0, 0,1, uh, 0, 0,52, it was something like that. It was 5.7 or 5.2. But we talked about uh, the idea of recurring decimals that they can be shown to be, or they can be proved that they are rational numbers. All right, so this is all part of our rational number system. All right, so remember that uh, we talked about our rational numbers on our introduction and we said rational numbers, these are the numbers that we can be able to write them as fractions, all right? Uh, in this format, all right? Uh, that is rational numbers can be expressed in form of a ratio of two integers, A over B. These are integers. So A being an integer, uh, B being also an integer, but B is not supposed to be equal to, is not supposed to be equal to zero. That is the condition of your rational numbers. So if you understand this concept of our rational numbers, now the question, can we prove that the recurring decimals are rational numbers? All right, we had a proof of 0, 0,1, if you still remember, and other. So you're just going to have a continuation on this exercise. If you did not, under, if you did not watch that video, make sure that you watch the video. I think it was exercise one or exercise one where we, I talked about this part of our, our recurring decimals so that at least you can be able to understand this class as we are moving together. So that is our part D of the question where we are given in this case, show that the following recurring decimals are rational. All right, so the first part of our question we are given in this case uh, 0, 0,4 uh, dot like that. So this means it's a recurring number. Remember, I told you on the introduction that a recurring number, if it is given like 0, 0,1, it means 0, 0,1111 and so on and so on. It's an endless decimal that you are going to have. But that endless decimal that you have, it is a rational number. We have to prove that. All right, so remember what I said, guys, you're going to introduce X to be part of that rec recurring decimal that you are having. So you can just say, uh, let X be equal to my recurring decimal which is uh, 0, 0,444 and so on. So as these numbers are the same, uh, like they are repeating, they are, they are the same numbers, 444. Four, four, so, so there's no need for you to write as many values as you uh, 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 like uh, other values, all right, that are different from this type of equation. So here you can even represent uh, four digits or three digits or even two, or even one digit is fine because these numbers are the same that are after the comma, all right? So what you're going to do, uh, is that you now have your equation one. So this is our equation one. So in equation one, I told you that you're gonna multiply by 10. Multiplying by 10 is making uh, sure that our numbers, they do not change after the comma. They remain as they are. Only we can move the comma after, we can just move one comma to the right. Uh, that is the case of multiplying by 10. So we're going to multiply everything on equation one, including our X. So that's 10 times X which is uh, 10x is equal to, you multiply this number by 10. Remember guys, I told you to multiply by 10 means you move one comma to the right. So meaning to say our comma is now at this point. So the number is supposed to be four comma. You write the digits after the comma, which is we've got three digits after the comma. That is four, four, four like that. But remember that this and so on means there are so many values that we have there after they are so up to infinity. So we are going to take one of those fours that are there after the comma so that it matches also like the same number of values after the comma so that it becomes uh, like uh, we have uh, one, two, three, four digits. We must also have four digits after the comma. That is the purpose of what? Of doing that, all right. Otherwise, it does not affect our, our calculations. We were supposed to multiply again by 10 and so on and so on and so on. But we can see that, remember the purpose is that the digits after the comma, the numbers after the comma, these ones after the comma, are they the same? 
if they are the same as long the digits after the comma are the same as long you see this part happening that the numbers after the comma are the same for the two given equations this is our equation two once you see this happening you subtract so in this case you are going to subtract what are you subtracting you are subtracting the given equations so you can just write equation two minus equation one so in this case we're going to subtract uh, equation two minus equation one so equation two being this part or you can even write equation one minus equation two if you want but you'll be working with the negative values here you are going to be maintaining positive values so it's going to be the part of x to the x here so that will be uh, 10x minus x remember we are subtracting equation two minus one you move on to the numbers on this right side which are the numbers so you have got four comma four 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 like that you just maintain uh, four digits after the comma the ones that you had before so that is going to be minus uh, 0, 0,4, 4, 4, 4, like that. So if you are to take a closer look, the purpose of us subtracting was because we have same numbers after the comma. So if they are the same and we subtract these numbers, they will cancel each other. We are going to have 4 minus 4, which is a 0, 4. So you're going to obtain 4. You just subtract. Or you can even use your calculator on that case, all right? So this is just same as a one here. So we're going to subtract 10 minus one, which is going to give us nine X, which is equal to, so like I said, this part here, it cancels with this part that you see. So it is going to be four minus a zero, which is going to give you a four. But if you are not sure about this, just use your calculator, with the values as you see them as they are here. So we're going to have four comma four, 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 like this, four of them minus uh, zero comma four, 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 like that. So you're going to obtain a four. So that is the condition that I'm simply explaining to say that if you have these values after the comma being the same, you get a zero from there. So you just subtract the numbers that are before the comma, which is four and zero, which gives you a four. Then to find X, you are multiplying from our equations from grade nine. We said we divide by the number to remove the number that is multiplying. You have to divide by that number. So that means you remain with X in that case, all right? So therefore we are going to see that our X can be written as, so therefore we are going to have our X as uh, four over, Four over nine. Remember what does X represent? X represents our recurring decimal, which is this one that we had before. We said in place of our recurring decimal, let it be represented by X. So if X represents a, a recurring decimal, and that same recurring decimal represented by X is giving us four over nine as a fraction. We have to check now, is it a rational number or not? So remember our introduction, we said a rational number is the one that you can write in the form of A over B, where A and B are integers. And that's exactly what we are seeing here. We can see that we have got uh, A and B, four over nine, these are integers, and B is not equal to zero. So that we have shown that this is truly a rational a rational number so that's why all along i was saying guys whenever you see uh whenever you that's an irrational uh number sorry that's why i was saying whenever you see uh a recurring decimal it's a rational number it's a rational number but now we are proving to say truly they are rational numbers so that now uh, uh, answers our question to say why are we saying a rational number i mean a, a, a recurring decimal is a rational number so that is to show we are now showing we are now proving that all right let us check the second question and see what we have sorry for that i wanted to do this so i want us to take this uh second question and see let us try to prove and see because sometimes it's not that you're gonna work with two equations uh sometimes you have to multiply they can be up to four equations until 
you obtain same digits after the comma. Uh, so you have to be careful on your simplification. So the next one is given as 0, 0,21. So that's number two, whereby we are given as 0, 0,21. And there, there's a bar there and another bar. So this is like this. All right. So let us consider this. We want to show that this is a rational number. So like I said in the previous case, we are going to introduce x. So let x be the recurring decimal, which is 0, 0,21. So it's repeating at 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, and are, are repeating. So it is going to be 0, 0,21. It repeats again, 2, 1. It repeats again, 2, 1. It repeats again, it repeats again, and so on. And so guys, you can write as many digits as you want. Let us just keep six, they are fine, guys. Okay? Six digits are fine, all right? So you're just gonna write and so on and so on and so on. So you write as many digits as you want, or even four digits here, guys, they are fine. Instead of working with so many digits like this, we end up having a lot of things. Let us just work with four digits, they are fine here. All right, so that's 0, 0,21, 2, 1, 2, and so on and so on, all right? So this is going to be your first equation. So like I said, what are you going to do? You're going to multiply by 10 your equation throughout. All right, so 10 times x, that is going to give us uh, 10x. 10 times 0, comma this, you're just going to move one comma to the, to the right, meaning to say your comma is now at this point. So it is now 2, comma, 1, 2, 1, and so on. So it is now 2, comma, 1, 2, 1, and so on and so on. So to match the values to, to remain with the four digits after the comma, 1, 2, 3, 4 we are supposed to include another digit. So it's now one, two. So it's gonna be one, two again, one, two, one, two, one, two, and so on, all right? So that is what you're gonna have. So this is our second equation. All right, this is where we are, guys. Let us, let us reason together here. Let us be together on this part. Are these digits, these numbers after the comma the same? Are they the same? That, that, that is the question. That is the question that you're supposed to ask yourself. Let me do this. Are these digits after the comma the same? Two, one, two, one. Check here, guys. This is one, two, one, two, not two, one. This is two, one, two, one. So these ones, they are not the same. So if they are not the same, don't force yourself to subtract because they are not the same. Uh -uh. You have to subtract if they are the same. So what are you going to do? You multiply again by 10. You're gonna see what's gonna happen there. Let us multiply again by, by 10. All right, so that's 10 times 10 this time. So 10 times 10, which is we are now at 100X is equal to, you multiply by 10 here, multiply by 10, simply move a comma to the right, one comma to the right. So your comma is now at this point. So it's now 21 because it's at this point. So this comma is shifted. So the number is now 21. You have moved the comma, it has moved, it's now here. So it's now 21 comma 212. So you're gonna have 212 and so on and so on and so on. But because we've got four digits after the comma, four numbers after the comma, here we've got three numbers after the comma. So to make them four, we're gonna maintain two one, two. So the other digit must be a one and so on, and so on, and so on. So now we have our equation three. All right, so instead of me multiplying again by 10, I have to check because I'm now having another equation. Maybe the, 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 the digits after the comma or the numbers after the comma, they are the same as here. Maybe they are the same as what maybe. I'm not saying they are the same, I'm saying maybe. So let us check now if they are the same. The question is, the numbers after the comma, they are supposed to be the same. So if we check here, this we've got two, one, two, one, which is the same scenario as what we have on equation one, two, one, two, one. So if we are to consider that these digits are the same, not here, this one is same, it's one, two, one, two, this is two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. So equation one and equation three, all right? Equation one and equation three. They have same numbers after the comma, same numbers after the comma. 
So if we have same numbers after the comma, what are we going to do, guys? Remember I said you subtract. Once you see that, you are going to subtract your equations. So in order for you to subtract, you subtract where the numbers are the same. We saw that it's happening in equation three and equation one. So that means we are going to subtract equation three minus equation one. So that's we are going to subtract equation three minus equation one. What is equation three? We take everything as it is on equation three. Equation three is given as 100x, all right? Then we subtract what we have, everything as it is on equation one. So 100 is subtracting x on equation one. So that is 100x minus x is equal to, again, equation three minus equation one. So we take this side, what we have on equation three, which is 21, 21,2121. So now there's no need for you to write and suppose we know that these numbers are the same, that we're gonna have two, one, two, one, and so on, all right? Minus, we take this side, what we have on our equation one, which is 0, 0,2121. So there we are, guys. We are supposed to subtract. But like I said, on your subtraction, it's an advantage because we're just gonna subtract direct, all right? So here it's a one. So if we subtract 100 minus a one, you just remove a one on 100, you remain with what? With the 99, so that will be 99x. Or you can just use your calculator, like I said before, if you are having a challenge on your subtraction addition, use your calculator to prove that 100 minus a one, that's a 99, all right? So you do the same thing on these numbers, but like I said, if these values after the comma are the same, because we can see that we've got same values after the comma two, one, two, one here, two, one, two, one. So they will subtract each other. They will cancel each other, these ones. So you remain with the 21 minus a zero in that case. So 21 minus a zero, it gives us 21. Remember to add a zero or to subtract a zero from a number it remains as it is. It is not affected if you add or subtract as zero, all right? So guys, th this part is not like, you, if you do not understand this part, like what is happening, use your calculator in that scenario, all right? Just use your calculator to subtract. That's 21 comma uh, two one like this, comma uh, two one two one minus, that's a zero comma two one, uh, to one like this. So this is going to give us a 21. So you can even use your calculator on a condition that you want to prove that your answers are correct. So now to, or to find or to determine the value of X, since it is a multiplication, like I said, you are going to divide by what? By 99 both sides. So therefore we are going to have uh, the value of X in that manner, which is going to be 21 over 99, but we can also check on our calculator if this value uh, can be reduced, but as you can see, we can reduce by three there. Yeah, so that's 21 over 99 like this, which gives us seven over 33, all right? So therefore our X is going to be equal to uh, seven over 33. That is the value of X, seven over 33. So if we have seven over 33, is it a rational number? Because the question is we are proving or we are showing that it's a rational number. So the question is that, is this fraction that we are having a rational number? Truly it is a rational number. It is a ratio of two integers, seven an integer, uh, 33 being an integer, all right? And the denominator, which is our B is not equal to zero. So therefore it means we have what? a rational number there. So that is how we can easily show or prove that these are rational numbers. All right, let us check number three. Uh, this part here is 0, 0,1. All right, there is a tricky thing like uh, we have got something there, which is just a tricky part to say, there is on for the dot there, it's on on four. All right, so it is four that is repeating, not one. No, not one. The dot that we have, it's on on four. So it is four that 
is repeating. So it means this, we're supposed to have it as 0, 0,1, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, and so it is the 4 that is repeating, that is a recurring part is on, on 4, not 1, 1 is not involved. So in that case, we are going to introduce x. So let x be equal to, uh, that will be 0, 0,1, 4. So it's going to repeat 4, 4, 4, 4, and so on, and so on, all right? Our five, uh, four digits are actually fine, all right? So I'm gonna have this way, uh, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on, all right? Like I said, guys, uh, you don't need to have 20 digits there or 30 digits, no, just few digits are fine. So. Let us multiply uh, as usual, going to multiply by 10 uh, so that we'll see are we going to have uh, same values after the comma or same digits after the comma. So let us multiply by 10, 10 times x, that is going to give us uh, 10x, right? Then 10 times this, we said we're going to move one comma this side. So it is going to be, uh, if we move the comma here, it's going to be a one comma. You're going to remain with this four, four, four after the comma, that's four. Four, four. Here there are five digits, all right? Four digits, one, two, three, four digits after the comma. Here there are three numbers after the comma. So we are supposed to have same number of values after the comma. So what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to add another four because here, like I said, there are so many fours that we have after, the, uh, after that. So we're just going to take one of those. Then we put it here so that we maintain uh, like the digits after the comma, the numbers after the comma, uh, we have got uh, same number of what of uh, values after the comma, there are four, there are four. But let us check, is that uh, equation one and equation two, on equation one and equation two, are we having same digits, same numbers after the comma? Here there is one, here we do not have a one. So they are not the same because we want to, we are comparing these ones. These are the ones that you are comparing. This is, there's a one here where we do not have after the comma. So they are not the same. So what do you do if, if they are not the same? You multiply again by 10, all right? Don't be tired up, multiply again by 10. So you're gonna obtain 10 times 10, which is 100X is equal to, you multiply by 10, this one, you move your comma, it's now at this point. So your number is no longer one, it's now 14. Or you can even do it on your calculator, like uh, you can just multiply uh, on your calculator. Am I still having this on the screen? All right, let me just show you on the screen here. 1,444 like that, or like this. You just multiply it by 10, all right? What do you get? You are going to get 14,44 and so on, which is the same thing that I was explaining here, which is 14,444. But you are supposed to know that here there are so many fours that we left out. So it means there is going to be another four to maintain uh, four values after the comma, all right? And so on and so on and so on. So this is going to be our, our equation three. All right, that is how you play around with this type of equation. You can even use a calculator to multiply, all right? But remembering that you are supposed to maintain if there are three numbers after the comma, you maintain three numbers after the comma. If they are seven numbers, you maintain them. Here I used four. These ones you choose of your choice. You can even use another four. You can choose six, you can choose seven. It's your choice, all right? But here I'm just gonna choose four. So I have to maintain four digits after the comma, four digits after the comma, four digits after the comma, or four numbers after the comma. But that is not the idea of our question. The question is that we are supposed to check now to say, do we have a condition where these numbers that we have been talking about after the comma are the same? Where are we having from the equations? So we can see a miracle that is happening on equation two and equation three. Here there is four, four, four. The numbers after the comma here are the same as these numbers after the comma here, four, 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 and so on. So equation three, and equation two are the ones that I'm going to use in this question because these are the ones that I have same numbers after the comma. So I said, once that exists, what are you going to do? You are going to, to subtract. So let us subtract. We're gonna subtract equation three minus equation two. 
So if we subtract equation three, so it will be 100x minus 10x. All right, that's 100x minus 10x. You subtract where the equations are the same. You are not going back to equation one. Those ones, it was because equation three and equation one were the same. But here it's different. Look at equation one. There's a one there. We don't have a one here. All right. So you do the same thing. Equation three minus equation two. So this will be 14, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, like this minus uh, this value, which is 1, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, like that, and so on and so on. So once you are at that stage, remember what I said, you can easily subtract your equations uh, from the left hand side they've got uh, 100 here we've got 10 so that's 100 minus 10 which is going to give us uh, 90 so that's 90x is going to be we subtract here so like I said before these are the same so they will subtract each other when you say for 14 minus 1 which is 13 or you can just do this on your calculator you can subtract direct on the calculator that's uh 14 comma uh 444 four, four, like that minus uh 1444 four, four. make sure that the digits here you've got same number of values like uh the digits after the comma like they are four if they are four here make sure they're also four here all right if there are five values after the comma make sure there are also five values after the comma so that you can subtract properly so as you can see you're getting 13 which is the same number that we are having on this part so what then is going to be the value of x since you are multiplying we said we are going to to divide by the number that is multiplying so therefore we are going to obtain uh that our x is equal to 13 over over 90 so that's the value of x that you're going to obtain 13 over 90 and like i said you can also test your values, all right? You can also test your values to see that if you have exact, uh, I mean, exact values, if it gives you exactly what you have, you can also test these values if you have exactly what you were given before and also to reduce your values 13 over 90. Uh, 13 over 90, this cannot be reduced. It remains like that. And also you can confirm that it's truly this recurring decimal of 0, 0.144, it, of 0, 0.144 and so on. It must give you the same thing if you simplify that. Let us put it this way. Let us just change to a decimal like this, 0, 0.14. So the four in bracket is the one they are showing that it's recurring this one. Or you can change it and properly see 0, 0.144. As you can see, this is the recurring part that we had. So if you, have an answer and you change you take your calculator to confirm and you do not obtain the same scenario as what you have here or the same situation as what you have here it means that answer is wrong you have to re uh, to redo your work because you must get back here to this point uh where you are having it as a what as uh as a recurring decimal from the fraction that you have uh it must give you back that all right, so these are typical questions, like I said. Um, you just have to work with uh, as much questions as you can. Uh, try to revise also with your question papers that can actually help uh, as you are revising towards your exams. So I'm not going to answer all the questions. Uh, I want you to try so that where you have challenges on this exercise let us know guys let me know on the comment section so that you can answer them together but uh, for revision sake let us also try to see what is happening on question number four on question number four we are given that's 19,45 like this so the dot there is on five all right this one is on five this one is on two and four and so on all right so it means we are having five, 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 and so on, which is repeating. So that we are going to introduce as our x. So let our x be equal to 19,45. So the five is going to repeat, guys, and so on, and so on, and so on. So instead of us having just a lot of, a long, uh, like many values that you're going to consider, a lot of values, just, guys, uh, these ones, they are fine, all right? So these values, they're actually fine. That's our equation one. Uh, like I said, you're gonna multiply by 10, uh, everything. So multiply by 10, that's equation one times 10, 10 times uh, x 
that will be 10x is equal to, you multiply this by 10, you just move one comma to the right, which is gonna be 194 comma, you're going to have 555 five, five, and so on. All right, so that will be 555. Five, five. Meaning to say we need another digit to equalize here. There are four digits. So I'm supposed to have another digit. Since it is now five, 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 which means I'm just gonna have a five. There are so there, there are fives here up to infinity. There are fives, five, 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 up to infinity. You just take one of those ones to match the values after the comma, like I said. All right, but we have same values after the comma. Here it's four comma five, five. Here it's five comma. They are not the same. Here we have got four. Here we do not have a four. So what did I say, guys? When it, you do not have uh, same, uh, same, same numbers after the comma, you multiply again by 10, all right? So multiply by 10, 10 times 10, which is going to give you 100x is equal to, if you multiply this by 10, it means the comma is now at this point here. So the number is now written as one, nine so the number is now given as a uh, one nine four five this is where the comma is now comma five 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 so we are going to be left with uh, three commas there we are going to be left with three digits after the comma these ones right so because the comma was at that point so the question is we are supposed to have our main one two three four so we're just going to add another five so that it it maintains what we have uh, from the other equation. So like I said, guys, if you do not understand this part of uh, you multiplying by 10, that you move a comma and uh, this and that, use your calculator at once, you multiply your values one nine. All right, so we're gonna need our calculator here. That's uh, one nine, all right, uh, one nine uh, four, one nine four comma five, 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 like this. You multiply it by 10. So you're going to obtain uh, 1,945,555. Five. So these three digits here. So you just add another five so that you obtain uh, four digits uh, after the comma, just like other e uh, equations. But the question is, these are the equations that we have, but do we have the same part that the digits after the comma are the same? The numbers after the comma are, are the same. Do we have a situation like that happening? Where, in which equations? That's the question that you've asked yourself. Yes, it's happening on equation two and equation three. This is equation three, sorry. So it's equation two and equation three, whereby we've got five, 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 and so on, all right? The same thing is happening on equation three. Once this happens, what do you do? You subtract two equations. So we are going to subtract in that case, equation three minus equation two. So let us subtract and see what's gonna happen. If we subtract our equations three minus two, we are going to have 100x minus 10x, which is 90x is equal to, we subtract these two. So like I said, we're gonna subtract this one and this one because these ones that are the same here, they will cancel, all right? So meaning to say, we're just going to subtract the whole numbers, only this whole number and this whole number, or you can just subtract as it is guys, on your calculator, everything as it is still, you obtain the same answer. So let's subtract, we're gonna have one, nine, four, five, minus uh, one, nine, four, like that, which is going to give us one, seven, five, one. So this is going to be one, seven, uh, five, one. All right, now divide by 90 both sides. It's gonna just divide by 90 by 90 and see what you're gonna have for X. So this is the value of X that you're going to have at the end, which is 1751 over 90. Is it in simplest form? If I divide this number here by 90 like this, it still gives me the same number, meaning to say it cannot be simplified further. It's already in what? In simplest form if, if it gives you the same answer if you that you used on your calculator, it still repeats the same answer. It shows that it cannot be simplified further. All right. So now checking the fraction that we are having from this number that we had of 19,45 with a bar on five. Is it a rational number or not? Because we have to prove, yes, truly, this is a rational number because we have expressed it in the form of A over B. 
where a and b are integers and b is not equal to and this number is not equal to zero so that's it so guys we just have to work with more questions so like i said let us try as much questions as we can on that exercise there are any questions that we still have that are still having a challenge on that exercise let me know so that we can work on those questions together uh, as we are preparing ourselves uh, towards our revisions uh, and so forth you know, some of us starting this for the first time so let me know on the questions that are still having a challenge so that we can work on them together